right, and welcome back to No Vacancy Podcast with me, Glenn Hausman. I'm excited. I'm coming at you with the floor from the Gaylord National here at uh, Hoacon 2018. I'm stuck in this hot booth, for, uh, but it's sponsored by Red Roof, and I'm having a great time. And uh, I have someone here who's going to help me uh, sweat it out. Red Roof's one and only the president of the brand, Mr. Andy Alexander. How are you, sir? Uh, very good, Glenn. Glad to be here. It's uh, really, uh, really exciting to have you here, and thank you so much for uh, sponsoring the booth. I appreciate it. I feel very much at home in this booth seeing red roof all over the place and and you know look we respect all our competitors in the market but having them in this room having to stare at red roof all day long we love it uh, yeah <laughs> i bet you do it's uh, it's really good and i must say um it was not well received by them which is exactly what you'd like that's, that's, that's what marketing <laughs> that's guerrilla marketing at its best right <laughs> it sure is yeah. and you guys are you guys have been doing a whole lot of changes and uh, you know at least i don't have to think too much i got so much red roof branding all over here i can kind of follow what's going on with the uh the entire company but to me the overall story is You've been really evolving over time, right? It, that to me is great. From a single brand to the plus to having the whole collection, I gotta, I gotta ask you, what's the strategy behind it? Why not just stay with one brand? Well, look, yeah, I, it really is an evolution of the brand, and the way we have evolved the brand has has been based on customer feedback. Mm -hmm. That's how we've always done everything we've done, from the product rollouts to the brand extensions. Uh, when we rolled out Red Roof Plus in 2013, we went and asked the customer, will you pay more to get more mm -hmm. in the economy segment? And they said, absolutely. And, and that's been a big success. Uh, we're past 60 properties in the Red Roof Plus uh, and, and very popular with the franchisees, both in terms of upgrading their current properties as well as bringing in new, the new Plus, plus properties. Uh, yeah, I really um, like the uh, the look and feel of those properties compared to what they used to be a number of, of years ago. It's um, it may be an economy hotel, maybe a budget hotel, but they don't feel like that. I feel like there's uh, everything in there. Um, it's modern, it's contemporary, it's a feel good environment. Yeah, the Red Roof Plus properties. I mean, if you look, if you review on TripAdvisor, Expedia, all those the sites in terms of the reviews, you constantly see. Well, why would I go anywhere else? Why mm -hmm. would I pay for an upscale brand when I can get this at an economy level price? That's upscale economy. You know, we that mm -hmm. is us. That's trademarked by right, us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the upscale economy branding is is what we're all about. And that evolution just has continued with the Red Collection. Yeah, the Red Collection is uh, just recently uh, announced. You've just been selling it since uh, February. We're recording this interview towards the end of March, so just two months. You already had one open. You've got another one uh, signed up. Uh, so that's uh, that's pretty exciting. Tell me a little bit about the Red Collection. Why go with this soft branding thing? Yeah, obviously everybody seems to be doing it, but why you guys? Well, again, this it, the same evolution occurred in this in the exact same way as the product rollout mm -hmm. and the brand extensions. We went back to the customer. We used Till and Knowlton. We went out and did extensive research on what the customer was looking for, and we asked them, "Do you need a mid-scale or upper mid-scale product in the center city, in the hearts of cities people love to visit, right. at a value price?" And the answer was absolutely we do. And you think, who needs that? Well, think about the millennials. We all talk about the millennials as, as what do they think, what do they want? Well, what we know they have is still not a lot of money. Well, I thought you were gonna say student debt. <laughs> they, they probably yeah. do, they do. And so they need, they want to have that experiential experience. They wanna have it in center cities, but they can't afford the, the upper upscale and luxury pricing. And so to have an opportunity to be in that environment at a value pricing is what they were looking for. Interesting, Glenn, one of the things they said as we did the research, they don't like hip, they don't like trendy. You'd right. think that's the buzzwords of the day. That's not what they wanted. They wanted centrally located, value priced, and hip and trendy and downtown and urban are out and value priced and centrally located, walkable, those types of phrases are what it's in. What you're saying to me is kind of confirming what I hear all around is you want to be the entree to the experience of the city exactly. itself and that's what's most important to these younger folks. And that's what we've been at Red Roof 
for our entire history. We're mm -hmm. not the experience, we're the means to the experience, but now we want to be, have that same approach in a center city uh, with a center city opportunity right. and obviously reg collection with an elevated uh, level of service and support can garner higher ADRs. What type of properties are the right fit to join the red collection? Yeah, so um, properties that either already are or are willing to conform to their cities mm -hmm, and to mm -hmm. give that experiential um, uh, that, feel yeah. to to the to the property and to the guest. So, for example, the the first one, uh, actually, both of these properties will be opening late summer, early far the fall. The first one, the St. Clair, mm -hmm. is on St. Clair, right near Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago. You can't get a better location. That's amazing. Um, and as they as that property is being essentially rebuilt from the studs up, um, it's being rebuilt with the Windy Cindy, Windy City in mind. And it's walkable to experiences to the Magnificent Mile, but the rooms also have a have a uh, downtown feel to them, have a have sort of the the hardwood floors like are traditional with red roof but then upgraded amenities and retiled subway tile bathrooms and things that you would expect in the city. Now you head to Springfield, Illinois. So that's where the second and our first mm -hmm. franchise location will be, the land of Lincoln. So you're talking mid-century decor, types of things you would expect as you're heading into Lincoln's birthplace. Right. I, I, I love that. And, you know, here's the thing that always that strikes me. I hear all about these industry segments, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Upscale, upper scale, upper mid scale, yeah. you know, mid, mid, mid scale, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. I think that we get so caught up in those those terms. We're not actually thinking of it, how a customer buys the room at all, right? I don't think that they look at a, uh, a red roof and go, oh, that's an economy, not an upscale or an upper mid scale or the mid-mid-mid mid scale I'm thinking of. They're thinking of, am I getting a good value for my dollar? Exactly. They, it's, it is funny. And you talk to, we're so used to being entrenched in the industry and talking to industry people. And we use these terms, mid-scale, upper mid-scale. And, and I've been using them here today already. Mm -hmm. But you go talk to your friends or your acquaintances outside of the industry, they don't know what you're talking about. They just know... Is it a good value right. for for what the product is? Right. That's why I'm always skeptical about all of these uh, these mega companies that have you know 20, 30, 8 million different brands to it that they're so slightly segmented, blah blah blah. But I, I again, I don't think the customer is thinking of it in those particular terms. They just want a clean, comfortable place to stay that matches the uh, the aesthetic that they enjoy being within. Yeah, they don't differentiate between those brands. Is that all the segmentation? It's more about. Do they have a good experience with that brand over and over again? And when they do, they'll connect emotionally to mm -hmm. it and they'll have that connection and they'll keep coming back. And so, yeah, I don't think I agree with you. I don't think it is all about trying to explain away how the segment is going to relate, especially when you have 30 brands. Right. How many different personalities can you possibly have? Right. Well, um, I. I've got a, a friend who's got 47 different yeah. personalities, but he's under intensive therapy right. for, for that. Um, okay, so yeah, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. But still, you know, you're becoming, as more consolidation kind of happens, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you're becoming more of the, uh, the renegade, the outsider, with um, yeah. having a small collection of brands. How does that in, enable you? And do you feel that, you know, it's holding you back at all? You know, it only holds us back with a very small segment of the franchise community. Mm -hmm. There are a few who just, look, ever, there's going to be some who think bigger is better, no matter what. And you can talk to them till you're blue in the face. But that's such a small segment, it's not really holding us back at all. Instead, what we're hearing is, and what we experience, is our high touch. We are a high touch company. If you are a franchisee for Red Roof, you are touched more, way many more times than you would from our competitor brands. All right, now but, I'm getting uncomfortable with all this touching. Yeah, touch. well, I guess, yeah, I guess in this world. Uh, touched in a little different yeah, way. In, right. this, in this case, touched with high, high yes, levels of exactly, service exactly. Uh, and operations support. Mm -hmm. And that's really the differential. And right. that is hard for brands that have 
thousands and thousands of hotels. At our size and experience, here I am. I've been I've spent now two days on the Ahoa floor. Right, and Look just around. to just to reset, we are here at the uh, the Ahoa Convention. In case right. people are tuning in in live, we're here at the Ahoa Convention, the Gaylord National Massive Trade Show floor. Absolutely huge. You've got a big booth over there. In addition to the one that you're sponsoring here. Yeah, no, and, and this is our Super Bowl. Right, I and mean, we view this as our Super Bowl. But regardless, every year I spend a couple days on the trade show floor. Mm -hmm. And that's because we're all about genuine relationships and real results. Right. That's what Red Roof is about. And we create those relationships by having the high touch, being, being um, in conversations with your franchisees, good right. or bad, comfortable or uncomfortable. Well, yeah. Here's the thing. Here, here's here's the thing. Sure, you you got to talk about that uncomfortable stuff. But if you don't address it, then you're really just allowing that sort of problem to to mushroom out of control. Better if be your franchise to be honest with you, so you could address the situation, or if necessary, make a course correction. And that happens all the time. Fortunately. Um, I think we're in the eight, mid 85% of our franchisees are not only just satisfied, but very satisfied with, with Red Roof and would recommend to a friend that they do a Red Roof. Right. And that's the word of mouth is when you get 6,000 potential franchisees under one location and the word of mouth is you should, you should be a Red Roof franchisee. That's a powerful experience. It certainly is. And here at the Ahoa event in particular, like you said, it's the Super Bowl uh, it's for our you Super because Bowl. this demographic really fits in with your hotel company. Uh, Ahoa members represent the vast majority of our ownership base, um, and we're thrilled that they do. Uh, they're, they're both appreciative and, and challenging at the same time, but they push us to be the best brand in the economy segment. And now as we expand, extend the best brand in the, both the mid-scale and maybe we say upper mid-scale. If, yeah. any, if anybody hey, knows what that is. We can say, we can say whatever we want. Yes, we can. It doesn't really seem to, uh, to matter. Right. So, um, you know, I feel compelled. I got to ask you about that pipeline growth because I'd be a very, uh, very bad uh, broadcaster here if I didn't get those numbers from you. I mean, we're up to over 540 properties. And mm -hmm. Glenn, you and I have been talking yeah. for years and, and that number just keeps keeps growing every year. Last year, we actually had a bit of a slower net growth. And that was because quite honestly, we moved a bunch of properties out of the brand. We still mm -hmm. saw 85 unit growth. That's great. Uh, but we, we dropped about half of those in terms of improving the quality of the brand. Um, this year though, we'll, we'll move well over 600 properties. Wow. Um, and are just seeing uh, continued interest in the brand. Do you have um, a set number of properties that you look to get rid of, like bottom 5%, bottom 10% every year? How does that work in the decision-making process? Because I know you don't want to lose mm -hmm. any hotels, mm -hmm. but sometimes the hoteliers are putting you in a position where they're not doing what they have to do and kind of give you guys no choice. We don't look at a set number. Right. I think that I think that last year was closer to 10%. That mm -hmm. was a big number yeah. for us. But really, it was the the strong growth that allowed us to do that. Mm -hmm. And in the past, you know, there are a lot of brands you don't want to be net negative. And um, we had, we've had three, now four strong years of growth in the 70, 80 unit uh, level. So that allowed us to be a little bit more aggressive with some of the franchisees um, who really just, they show that they don't want to be part of the brand if they're not going to make the improvements, right. both in terms of quality and service. Right. So uh, how big do you think you could uh, get these these brands going? Well, you know, I think you know, there's plenty of green space for us. A thousand mm -hmm. uh, Red Roof Inns would not be unquestionable uh, I don't in think so. any regard. As you know, we've expanded into Brazil. Yep. Uh, we just, it's either this week or maybe early next week, we're announcing a Rio property. So that'll be our fourth Brazilian property. We have three in three properties in Japan. Um, let's just say lots of other representatives from many other countries are knocking on our right. door. We are, I like to say, Glenn, that 
we're the last girl at the dance without a date. <laughs> and everybody's coming to ask us, but we're right. waiting for the right partners, and right. we don't just dance with anybody. Right. No, I love it. I love that you have hotels in Japan. I'm dying to get over uh, there. And They're uh, nice. They're now, nice hotels. And now I know I'm going to stay uh, at Redworth. All of this growth means that the company itself has got to grow, not just adding units, That's right. adding people, adding facilities. You guys are moving to a new office, aren't you? We are. We, we're upgrading our office space in terms of size and both in quality. So we'll still be in the Columbus area, but moving to New Albany, Ohio, which mm -hmm. is just outside to the Northeast. Right. And we're, we're upgrading our space to accommodate that continuing unit growth that we need to support at that high level of service and quality that the teams and franchisees expect. What's it like moving to a, uh, to a new office and designing all of it? You know, it, it, it is a lot of fun. And the, and the best thing is that we're really upgrading what our employees will receive in mm -hmm. terms of just job satisfaction, in terms of the product. Every desk will be ergonomic and will be up and down. You, know, you can raise your desk so you can stand. And oh, I love that. You can, you can sit. Uh, just for, for better health reasons, we have walking pads. I will say, before you go on to the walking pads, yep. I have one of those desks at uh -huh. home, and it makes such a big difference for me, right? Because in the morning, and when I'm having my coffee, I like to sit down. But then, to keep that energy up, I think it's really healthy to stand up and you know and just work that way. And especially when I do these kind of podcast yeah. interviews, I got to stand and kind of move around. Our, our employees are passionate, mm -hmm. and they work hard. And we have to give back to them. So by giving them better workspaces, by providing them with, with walking, walking paths. paths, we're going to have bike share arrangements, uh, work on having gym uh, availability in nearby gyms, uh, just really providing a healthier environment for our employees to work out of. Uh, that's, a, that's a big initiative of mine and one that I find uh, you know, it's just crucial to the success of your company that right. you have employees who are healthy and happy. How do you uh, how do you keep um, ahead of the trends and keep sharp as a, as a president of a company to make sure that you're planning to make the right decisions and create the if, create the basis for you to get that inspiration in order to lead the company in the right direction? You know. I guess I would say, fortunately, one of the things about Red Roof is we are the most recognizable mm -hmm. small brand in the business. And, you know, even well, though I, some other brands have 10,000 properties. I think that people think you have 10,000 properties. They do. They do. And I think that um, being part of an underdog, in a sense, right. because we're the small guy that everybody knows, right. just delivers the, the, the mm -hmm. employees are infused with that we're gonna we're gonna overcome it and right. we're gonna win and that the red roof passion uh that same passion you you know you see as as people come by the booth and th thinking that uh you're a red roof employee and all that sort of thing we we just we just ooze that that red roof passion so speaking of passion for red roof do people actually like sign deals here or is it just like um hey let's let's chat next week we signed more than a dozen deals last year and i hope we we go well beyond that wow. this year it's um yeah it's it's we you know most of those deals were already pre-discussed because you have to do the right disclosures yeah. and that sort of thing uh, but a lot to, like to have that face-to-face, -face, final closure, shake mm -hmm. the hand. It still is a people business. Right. I mean, you can do everything you want by email and voicemail and text, but getting face-to-face -face is how you get that deal done. Yeah. Um, so I want to know a little bit more about you. What was, that? what was the last movie that you saw? Oh, boy, the last movie. I haven't been going to uh, too many movies. Probably... Um, uh, that Winston Churchill movie was the, la the last, the yep. finest hour, the yeah. last hour, the darkest, the darkest, the darkest hour. hour. There you go. Um, but mostly, I'm spending my time. You know, my my two children have uh, now left the home mm -hmm. and are both in college. So I'm getting spending some time getting to know my wife again, which That's is nice. which is real nice. She's traveled with me. We've had some some great experiences recently on the road. Uh, throwing a lot of stuff out at home. Mm -hmm. um, and, first and, the children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, yeah, first the children, and then there's stuff. So, yeah. uh, but it's it's been a whole new experience for me. You do you yeah. sort of 
uh, you have to re, you know, reset your life and, and start looking for, for new hobbies and things to do. So how do you do that? Because in four years from now, yeah. my kids are going to be headed off to college, and yeah. then all of a sudden it's going to be really bizarrely quiet around there. It, it, I will tell you, it is, it is bizarrely quiet. I think, um, you know, as I said, you can reinvest yourself in your work, mm -hmm. but seriously, what I've done is reinvest myself in my marriage. Right. And it's been a great experience. All of a sudden you start doing things that you used to do before the kids existed, like traveling together, yeah. which is, which really is fantastic. And, and has, has just, you know, made, made our marriage one that's just more, we're more enthusiastic yeah. about it and about each other. So where, where have you gone recently that was really super good? And yeah. What if they don't have a red roof there? What are you going to do? Sleep in a van? <laughs> so we, uh, we recently went to Enchantment Resort in mm -hmm. Sedona. Yep. Uh, we just came back from there on I Sunday. I heard that's going to be a new red collection uh, it, we, we would accept it. <laughs> yeah. I will tell you that. It was it was unbelievable. And if you've experienced Sedona, it's it's beautiful. And, and, and we had a great time out there. Uh, we did visit a couple red roofs along the way in mm -hmm. terms of stopping by. I'm, I'm, I don't... It's very rare that I drive past a red roof and don't go in. Right. Um, and had some good experiences talking to, in this case, two franchisees out in that area, uh, and they're um, they're loving the brand. That's great. Do you um, do you how do you rejuvenate yourself to make sure that you're you're sharp every single day in the office? Something I I seem to have trouble with. I seem to burn the candle at both ends. Yeah, I wish I could say that I do do that. I think it's more a weekend thing for me and take the time to to step away for a little bit. Although I'm not a disconnected person. I'm not someone who needs to be disconnected uh, continuously. And so the recharging, I think, you know, that's a really good question. Maybe I should uh, think about that and <laughs> recharge a little bit. Because well, it's, it's, been, it's been a long summer. Yeah. I well, mean, spring. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Andy, I think um, we're going to have to, next time we get you on the show, find out how you sought your inner recharge there. All right. That, I'll work on that. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. So before, before we wrap up here, you know, I, I've, we've got all this great Red Roof branding in here, but I don't know how to find you. What if I want to uh, open a franchise with you guys? Well, you certainly uh, go to redrooffranchising.com and you can see uh, what what your opportunities are there or reach out to me even you can here's the trick about red roof you know anybody who works at red roof and you know their first initial and their last name you just add at redroof.com and you're in touch with them that's excellent i love that you're so easily uh, accessible that's, and that's one are. of that's one of the things that i've loved about having a relationship with you i feel like i could just uh, drop you an email call you on the phone i don't have to go through 800 pr people in order to uh, even come close to talking to anytime. you anytime that's what red roof is all about genuine relationships and real results and be sure to look out for that big red roof in uh it's already in your town or coming to a town near you as they strive to get to a thousand hotels i want to thank andy alexander for being here and i want to thank all of you for listening to the show each and every week i hope you had fun if you're watching this on the live stream if you want to watch us on video and you're hearing the podcast version go to novacancynews.com you can watch the the video there and make sure you subscribe to our newsletter text the word hotel to 66866 and you'll get subscribed and if you're not subscribing to the podcast on itunes or google play or anywhere podcasts are please do it now thanks so much and i'll be back next week that is unless i decide to go open up a red roof in sedona see you guys soon